Uh, today, I have been tasked uh, to talk about radiation and immunotherapy. Um, I call it radioimmunology and immune priming ablation for in-situ tumor vaccines. So all of us here, whether we are using ultrasound or radiation therapy, is really trying a focal therapy, uh, delivery of energy, in this case, ultrasound and or radiation uh, to a tumor to release tumor antigens and danger signals and thereby uh, you know, generate an in-situ tumor vaccine. So we are engineering by using energy such as radiation and ultrasound, engineer the tumor microenvironment to drive systemic immunity. Uh, these are my conflicts and disclosures. Uh, I do have grants from Johnson & Johnson and Celdex, as well as consultant for Varian Focus Ultrasound Foundation and uh, international faculty at Shanghai and Delhi. Um, the um, study, what we have done for radiation, I think can be summarized operationally into three different applications. And mostly what I'm dealing with here is to explain that in radiation therapy, three gray times 10 equals 30 gray is not the same as 30 gray times one equals 30 gray. In other words, only in radiation three times 10 is not equal to 30 times one. And why? Because different types of radiation has different impacts. In this particular case, we are showing that there are fractions such as one, si one dose of 34 gray or three doses of 18 gray uh, that can be immunogenic ablation dose, which controls the primary tumor for two to three years without any local recurrence. In contrast, there are subablative doses which are resulting from eight gray times three or six gray times five doses, which doesn't control by itself the primary tumor, but in combination with immunotherapy has been shown to be highly successful uh, in not only control the primary tumor, but also abscopal tumors. And finally, there are very low dose radiation, which is essentially um, modulates the tumor microenvironment. These are two studies, one done in lung cancer, one done in head and neck cancer. And the idea was, can we take the traditional chemotherapy and radiation therapy, which is given over six weeks, uh, and take that regimen, 1.8 gray, small doses of radiation over six weeks, and combine that with uh, immunotherapy. In the first example in Pacific trial, uh, after the completion of chemo radiation therapy, durevolumab was added and compared to that of placebo. And as you can clearly see, there's a huge survival uh, advantage. Progression-free survival was 16.8 months in case of immunotherapy plus chemo, radi chemo radiation followed by immunotherapy. In, in contrast, placebo arm only had a 5.6 progression-free survival. And this New England Journal paper changed the landscape of how uh, cancer is treated in lung cancer, where uh, we are now using uh, immune checkpoints after chemo radiation. In contrast, the Javelin study in head and neck chose to use avalumab concurrently during chemo radiation therapy over six weeks. And the results, as you will see, the placebo arm in red appeared to be doing better than that the immunotherapy arm. Moral of the story is that if you use concurrent immunotherapy, you are activating the T cells while at the same time trying to kill them during your traditional chemo radiation therapy um, um, a, a, over six weeks. So it's, it's better to use the Pacific trial um, uh, paradigm of adjuvant uh, immunotherapy after traditional chemo radiation therapy. But what we are trying to discuss here are examples of how hypofractionated radiation therapy can be combined with uh, immunotherapy. And one recent paper coming out of Will Cornell uh, was amazing. Uh, this is uh, essentially Sylvia Formentis group who have been working with non-ablative radiation uh, uh, such as eight gray times three which were used to essentially modulate the cell surface 
and have death receptors and uh, antigen receptors uh, amplified by radiation and then using um, uh, immune checkpoint therapy. And a trial was recently done where biopsy-proven lung cancer patients, uh, surgically resectable, 60 patients were randomized, 30 to a arm of duravolumab, uh, given two preoperative cycles at week one and week four. And then 30 patients received duravolumab, but concurrently received eight grade times three uh, in one week. Uh, of radiation, and, and then they went to uh, surgery. And the summary result was that there was improved pathological response with subablative stereotactic radiation. As you see here, duravolumab plus SBRT had 16 major pathological responses, almost 50% pathologic response, with eight complete pathologic response, which is 26%. In contrast, duravolumab alone had 0% complete P PCR. So, and this was highly tolerable, and this might change, this might be a trend which might change that in new adjuvant setting, a subablative dose of radiation plus duravolumab might be the future. Uh, at Montefiore, we are starting one with immunotherapy plus chemotherapy versus immunotherapy, chemotherapy, plus SBRT, eight grade times three, with the same uh, 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 paradigm. With this example, let me show a, a separate alternative example of radiation immunity cycle where we uh, um, did a trial of radiation plus flat 3 ligand uh, because we wanted the immature dendritic cells stimulated by flat 3 ligand to go over a radiated tumor, eat up the cells, and then uh, present um, the danger damaging signals and present the antigens uh, to the de dendritic cell, to the uh, cytotoxic uh, helper cells and cytotoxic T cells in the draining lymph node. CDX301 is the flat ligand we obtained from CELDEX. Um, it, as is shown that it, the study hypothesis was one lesion will be treated while other lesions will not be treated with radiation. Flat ligand alone is highly tolerable, but it does, it's not a tumoricidal drug. And so we are looking at systemic immune response and abscopal effect. We intentionally chose the radiation fractionation uh, to have one fraction, three fraction, or five fraction of ablative dose. Uh, majority of our patients, uh, 26 out of 29, was previously treated with chemotherapy and immunotherapy. Uh, and grade three toxicity in this trial was almost negligible, uh, was zero, and there was no dose limiting toxicities. Um, flat T ligand in patients did increase dendritic cells and monocytes. And what we found uh, in the spider plot that nine out of 29 patients had abscopal effects and had a remission. The dotted line are patients who record, but then when we repeated the radiation flat T ligand had a, had a remission. Uh, if there was a PET response at two months, that was highly prognostic of overall survival. Uh, disease volume was not prognostic. However, disease multifocality was, if you had two to four lesions, uh, metastatic lesions, you had 80% uh, long-term uh, uh, overall survival, 80% survival over two years. In contrast, uh, if you had five to 12 lesions, you had a survival of seven months. And finally, neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio was prognostic. So in this trial, uh, these are some of the examples of a patient who had uh, one lesion treated and the primary lesion, which was large, uh, appeared to, you know, was went into remission, and this patient was alive for 36 months. Um, there are other examples where bone mets, as well as supraclavicular mets, uh, and pleural effusion uh, were treated uh, had an abscopal effect after radiation plus flat C ligand. So overall, our trial showed a good tolerance, and in contrast to salvage chemotherapy, which has median progression to survival of two, two months to 2.8 months, we had a 
uh, uh, significant uh, improvement in progression-free survival. So with that, I would take any questions. Thank you.